This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. When people think about serial killers, they often think about grotesque, monstrous men, or even well-spoken and often charming gentlemen. Today, we're going to talk about 17 grandmas who committed crimes so horrific They were often given life sentences despite their old geriatric age. We'll talk about that and so much more on this episode of Two Murder Morons. Here. Welcome to the show. My name is Andy. Sitting across from me, as always, is my good buddy Mike. It wouldn't be a show without me. It, it absolutely would not be a show without you. It'd be pretty boring. But it w- Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate well, no, that. I'm just saying, but you know, <laughs> you know. Well, welcome. Welcome to Two Murder Morons. Um, we've got kind of something different. We're doing something different this episode. Yeah, a little. Uh where I found this awesome article on Ranker. Which I don't, have you ever been on Ranker.com? Yeah. It, it's pretty cool. Um, so this is an article just from May 22nd of this year, of 2024. Okay, correct. Um, written by Jacob Shelton called 17 Little Old Ladies Who Committed Murders. It's hard to believe that a little lady would do it. I know. We were just talking before we started recording. You're like, I don't believe you, Andy, that I there know, are 17 I, grandmas. I do, but I can't believe there's that many. There. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're grandmas. Grandmas true. don't kill. They give cookies and chocolate milk. Sure. True. Oh, they kill Mike. I know. They kill, and yeah. some of these are nasty. Oh, I, like, know. I, I know. We did the story <laughs> on a couple, but some of these are bad. Um, also, before we dive into the story, I'm, this is going to throw you off guard because, you know, I like to do so without talking to you. Yeah. I'm going to dedicate this episode to my late Aunt Viv. Okay. So uh, she was my dad's older sister. Okay. And when we started doing Two Murder Morons, one of my cousins, one of her daughters, my okay. cousin Chrissy, reached out. And she was like, you know, your Aunt Viv loved this true crime stuff. You know, sometime when you do a female serial killer or something like that, you're going to have to, like, mention her or dedicate the show to her. Okay. So I figured this is the perfect episode. There we go. To dedicate to my late Aunt Viv. Okay. So this one's for you. There you go. All right. Should we dive right into the story? Let's get her done, dude. Let's get with this going. Okay. Let's go. (laughs) Okay. Let's go. All right. This is this older one. Older one. She ain't that old. Well, I meant like oh. older and time wise. Yeah, I know. So between 1939 and 1940, Italian serial killer Leonardo Ciaciuli. I'm going to. Sounds good. Sounds good, right? Yeah. She's she's pictured here. Yeah. She's nicknamed La Safona Catrice de Corregro. How'd you come? Dude, that just like rolled. I feel, though, that if anybody that watches speaks Italian will comment and say, I said that nowhere near the correct Probably. way. But it, it sounded really good to me. I, I acted confident. Yeah. Like, I'm confident. It, it like rolls off your tongue. Right? It sounded really good. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I'm about to give you kudos. <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope so. Sounds good. So she killed three women as human sacrifices to break a family curse. Per- oh, okay. Curses were still alive in 1939, I guess. Oh, I'm sure they were pretty good back then. Sienna Culey, we're hoping that's how you say her last name, mm-hmm. suffered numerous miscarriages and lost many of her children to illness when they were young. Okay. To protect her surviving children, she turned to the occult for answers and chose to offer the dark powers human sacrifices in exchange for their safety. Okay, so how often do people change to, to go to the occult <laughs> for information? I mean... Just curious, is that like a big deal? Uh, apparently, back then, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's the first I've ever heard of it. Yeah. Okay. In order to dispose of the bodies, she dismembered them. So this is a grainy dismembering some... I mean, we're not just talking about she got pissed off, shot somebody. Yeah, I get it. She we're has, dismembering some folks. That's some, that's some work. Yeah. She then turned them into soap. 
Okay. Or baked them into tea cakes to sell in her shop. Dear God. People ate. People. People. She noted that her final victim made excellent soap and a wonderful snack, saying, quote, the cakes, too, were better. That woman was really sweet. This woman is a psychopath. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. God. Italian authorities sentenced her to 30 years in prison. I would say so. I would hope so. Yeah. Hope, this, hope the soap's good there. Now this picture isn't great because she's she's doing her damnedest to hide from behind that folder. <laughs> yeah, the camera. she is. She know who she is. So German authorities arrested Andrea Gopner in July 2016 following the discovery of eight dead babies in her apartment. Eight dead babies. Eight dead babies. The woman admitted to killing sev- several of the children, but says she can't remember exactly how many. In a confession read out by her lawyer, Gopner revealed she had given birth to each of the eight babies alone at home and promptly suffocated any baby that moved or cried. What the fuck? I <laughs> know that's messed up. That's messed up. She placed the bodies of the babies in plastic bags or containers and hid them in her apartment. That's disgusting. Yeah. She and her husband lived in the apartment with the deceased you infants. Knew about it? along with their three other children who were still alive. Oh, my God. Authorities, authorities charged Gottner with four counts of murder and sentenced her to 14 years. So she killed eight babies. Well, they don't, they, they don't have the death penalty there. They got her with only four, and she only did 14 years. And yeah, it's different there. Did her husband get charged? He should have. Doesn't say. Kind of sounds like some guy I've heard of. <laughs> Look at this one. Holy shit. Jesus. <laughs> Man, she, uh. Well, she was never married. <laughs> oh, my God. God. This one's crazy, too. For 20 years, Amelia Dyer is said to have killed more than 400 infants while she was working as a, quote, unquote, baby farmer. Someone who adopts children for lump sums of money. Oh, okay. All right. I guess they call those people. Yeah. Baby farmers. Yeah. In 19th century Victorian England, it was common for older women to take in children for a fee. Uh, Yeah, I see. The Victorian nurse offered her services to young mothers who were unwed or unable to care for their offspring. Initially, she neglected the children until they died. But when that began to take too long, she started murdering them at the onset of their adoption to make more of a profit. Okay. Talk about not giving a shit about anybody but yourself. Yep. And well, look at her. <laughs> she looks like a mean old bird, doesn't she? Probably a reason why she was had a miserable life. Police were only able to confirm one of Dyer's victims, but investigators found concrete evidence of between 12 and 50 more deceased ch- children who had been in her care. However, it's widely speculated she killed hundreds more. Authorities sentenced her to death by hanging. Oh. Yeah. And she died in the summer of 1896. They don't play over there. Yeah. Well, back then. Back then. Yeah, back in those times. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Man, talk about a rough life. Come on. That's someone's grandma. <laughs> I don't care, dude. So this here is Tamara Samsonova. What's also, up with the names? I don't. Well, they're, they're all, you know, she's from uh, Russia. Oh, okay. That's why. All yeah. Right. There you go. She's also known as the Granny Ripper. Oh, so she's the Granny Ripper. Yes. Okay. She's a 68-year-old woman from Russia who confessed to killing 11 people over the span of two decades. Wow. Shortly after her arrest in July 2015, St. Petersburg, Russia, police found Samsonova's diaries, which included the gruesome details of how she would murder, dismember, and eat some of her victims. As brutal as the details of her stories are, her journals give a fairly straightforward version of each of her crimes. For example, quote, I killed my tenant, Volodya, cut him to pieces in the bathroom with a knife, put the pieces of his body in a plastic bag, and threw them away in the different parts of Frizinski District. Just written, matter of fact. Cut him up, pieced him out, and dropped him wherever. Yeah. Courts found Samsonova mentally insane. And it, sentenced her to life in a psychiatric facility. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one. Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's an old one. That's not the it's greatest of pictures, but. Is it 1954, 51, 54? Can't tell. Can't tell. We'll, we'll get into it. Nanny Doss. Nanny? That's a good old Nanny Doss. Nanny Doss. She began her silent murder spree at the age of 16 when she unsuccessfully tried to poison her first husband. <laughs> one of those. Great. Shortly after, in 1927, two of her daughters died of food poisoning. Food poisoning, okay. And her husband left with the eldest child. Smart. Yeah, peace out. Yep, later. For the next 30-some years, Doss would go on to allegedly kill four husbands, her mother, one of her mother-in-laws, her two sisters, a grandson, and a nephew. Why didn't the husband go to the authorities? You would think, right? Yeah, grab the daughter and go to the Tulsa, Oklahoma, right. PD, and talk to him. She was finally caught in 1954 when her fifth husband toppled over dead after drinking his morning coffee. <laughs> okay. The doctor who performed the autopsy found enough arsenic in his body to kill a horse. Uh, yeah, I'd and, say so. And suspected foul play. If he fell over that quick. Right. In 1955, she confessed to her killings and served a life sentence in Oklahoma. News reports from the Times say she was cheery, going as far to joke to journalists about her dead husbands. Wow. When asked why she killed, she told investigators it was a case of, quote, marital boredom. <laughs> Jesus Christ. God, if this story wasn't enough to make sure that I keep my significant other entertained. No kidding. Shit. Good Lord. Maybe I should have found out about this like 20-some years ago. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, Lord. In July 2016, 36-year-old Alan Trobaugh moved in with 65-year-old Gloria Marie Tensley and helped her take care of things around the house. I bet he did. <laughs> just, you just always have to go there, don't you? I'm just saying, I bet he did. <laughs> in the closet of her home in Paragould, Alaska. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. He found a human skeleton. He told Region 8 News, quote, I tried to open it and finally opened it, talking about the closet, mm -hmm. and it was like this wind blew out and cobwebs everywhere. I just immediately looked down and said, oh, no, that can't be real. So there's a skeleton set. Yeah. I mean, it, maybe it was like one of those doctor ones. Trobaugh said he lived with Tensley for about three months before finding the body. Reportedly, Tensley was cashing Social Security checks in the dead man's name after she stashed his body in the closet. Of course. Authorities charged her with abuse of a corpse and fraud. Didn't didn't get her with murder, though. No. Well, because they can't prove that she murdered him. True. So this is Ray and Faye Copeland. Ray and Faye. Ray, Ray and Faye Copeland up here. How does that happen? Uh, I don't know. Well, those are popular names. It'd be then, like I if I got with someone named Sandy. It'd be Andy and Sandy. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Anyway, okay. okay, Faye Copeland worked with her husband, Ray, to kill drifters who they lured to their Missouri farm. Ray Copeland was a known fraud in the small town of Mooresville. When money was tight, he picked up drifters to act as farmhands to commit cattle fraud. I heard of this. You've heard of this before? Yes. The drifters bought cattle using bad checks. Yep. And then after the transactions were done, they would mysteriously disappear. Disappear. Weird, the witness disappeared. Yeah, and then the cops would come, wanted to question him, and Ray and Faye be like, oh, you left town like two weeks ago. Yeah, because they're drifters. Yeah. Yeah. The Copelands killed the drifters and buried the bodies on the farm. Allegedly, Faye even sewed a quilt from the victim's clothing. Yeah. Like a good granny would. Yeah. I'm going to make exactly. a quilt. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Well, you got to have a memory. Memory. <laughs> right. Authorities arrested the Copelands after a former employee called a Crime Stoppers tip line in 1989. Charged on first degree murder, charged on first degree murder counts, the court sentenced both Ray, 76, and Faye, 69, to death as the oldest couple on death row. Supposedly, I think Ray, the reason why he started doing it was because he couldn't trade cattle, I guess, anymore in the local towns. Because everybody thought he was a crook or well, he something. Was. He was a crook. Yeah. And so they wouldn't, nobody would ever let him come. Yeah. So that's why he started using these hand these drifters that came and helped out around his farm, supposedly. <laughs> yeah, to go buy for him because no one would sell to him. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, Ray died in prison, and the courts later reduced Faye's sentence on appeal. In 2003, she died on parole in a nursing home. Yeah, well, I think she was the mastermind. Probably. There's no photo of this one. That's why I have this really creative okay. silhouette of a one. Right, <laughs> this took me all of seven seconds on Canva to, oh, okay. to add the silhouette of a woman and prison bars. Isn't that creative? Yeah, it's good. In 2015, Nilda Sheffield, age 53, wrote in her diary that she wanted to kill her daughter and grandchildren to free them from hell. Yes. Okay. She compared herself to Abraham a biblical figure God called upon to sacrifice his own son. Yes. The Florida grandmother then shot 31-year-old Elizabeth Flores and her children, ages 7 and 2, before turning the gun on herself. Mm. According to police reports, Sheffield killed her family with a shot to the back of the head while they slept. Mm. Sheffield reportedly believed the family would be reincarnated and meet again in the next life. I guess what you believe, you believe. Yikes. Look at this one. Man, dude. She's been... Those <laughs> eyes, man. Look at those eyes. I know. Don't she look like a killer? She's creepy. In 2016, Felton police arrested Angela Bingham after she confessed to killing her three-year-old grandson. Bingham reportedly said she couldn't afford to have a kid around, so she held a towel over her grandson's mouth until he died from lack of oxygen. I can't, couldn't afford him. Unbelievable. Why did she have him in the be- to, to, in the first place? I, Where's mom and dad? Ex- yeah, who knows with that. In That's, order to mask the smell of the decomposing body. Oh, dear God. She, quote, stuffed towels around the bedroom door and burned incense. Which is like, you know, I don't know. Why, why she keep it there? I, I don't know. She's sick, Mike. Yeah, I know. She's sick. I know. Bingham allegedly tried to kill herself after committing the murder. Delaware authorities sentenced her to 22 years in prison. They should have put mom and mom and dad in there too. Oh yeah, wherever they're at. Yeah. For Here's another one. for neglect. Right. Here's another one I didn't have a photo for. Oh yeah, I see that. So she says twin. Twins. 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 Basil. Twinsies. In November 2005, following an argument regarding a dowry, 62-year-old Mangal Bharat. Torat, this is in India. Yes, I you kind of surmised kind of that. Yeah, especially <laughs> yeah. when you said dowry. <laughs> she she beat her daughter in law Neelam Torat, doused her in kerosene, Dear. and set her on fire. Wow, dude, those dowries are serious yeah, over there. Are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, Good yeah, Lord. Yeah. Mumbai High Court sentenced Torat to life in prison. Neelam sustained burns on over 85% of her body and later died from her injuries at Batia Hospital. She probably was better for her. To, oh, yeah. I'm sure the care was horrid. Allegedly, Therat had persistently tormented her daughter-in-law since the nuptials earlier that March. Wow. Prosecutors tried to have Trot's husband arrested as well, but according to a judge working the case, quote, although her husband was also equally a culprit, there is no substantial evidence to convict him. The courts acquitted him of charges. Yikes. Now, look at this light. Look at this sweet little old lady. Yeah, yeah, she looks like grandma. She looks like Mrs. Claus. Like, does she not look like she's holding a tray of cookies? Yeah, she does. Yep. I mean, she's kind of making a weird facial expression, but. Oh, that's that's because she's like seeing us come in, you know, acting all stupid. Right. Right, yeah. This is like the you've been naughty look. Yeah, yeah. You're going to bed early. You sure you want these cookies, elves? Right. Good Lord. Well, this is Melissa Ann Shepard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And her nickname is the Internet Black Widow. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this 81-year-old woman from Halifax, Canada, murdered two of her five husbands and tried killing the others over the span of two decades. Her method of choice was to give her husband's tranquilizers, causing them to overdose. After the death of her second husband in 1991, authorities convicted her of manslaughter and sentenced her to six years in prison. After an early release, Shepard killed another man. So she goes to prison, gets out, kills somebody else. Oh, she only got six years. Come on. I'll do it again. (laughs) Evidence also shows she tried unsuccessfully to kill two of her other husbands as well. Police finally charged her with attempted murder in 2005 after the near death of her fifth husband. 
Her husband had been admitted to the hospital for poisoning, and investigators found a stockpile of prescription pills from five different doctors at her home. In 2016, the courts released Shepard under the stipulation she document any potential relationship with a man and to report weekly, either by telephone or in person, to the police. That's all? <laughs> so... Let me get this straight. They release her and say, "Hey, we're going to release you, but just if you're if you're going to get another boyfriend, you just got to let us know." Like, what? What does this happen? This is in Canada, How? Halifax, How? Canada. What's that do for it? I mean, okay, I don't know. We're going to give her six years for this one, but next time she does it, hey, why don't you just stay at home and you just let us know the next time you get a boyfriend, so we can talk talk to him, so he's aware, of, you know, that you're a killer. I guess. I don't know. They need to be aware that you're a killer, eh? Eh? <laughs> eh? No, oh, here come the bad comments. Wow. You know this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That was an intense way to introduce Juana Braza. Yeah. This is her. That, yeah. the, both those pictures are her. I know that. Yeah. We did an episode. This forever. We did. There's a full episode on oh, this one. This is the episode you and me do. It was all in Spanish. Um, it is. Is it a public episode? Uh, if it is, I'll link it in the description. So if it you might be, I can't remember. If you want to see, uh, <laughs> this is an amazing story. Yes. So basically, in Mexico City between 1998 and 2006, Juana Braza here, 48, murdered close to 50 women while moonlighting as a luchador. Is that how you say it? Luchador? The rest. The rest. She does the uh, rest. Uh, 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 what do they call it? Uh, 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 uh. It's L U C H A D O R. Luchador? Yeah. Luchador? Something like that, yeah. A, a Mexican wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Her name while she was wrestling, as we remember, was La Dama del Silencio, the silent lady. Yep. Mm. And she posed as a healthcare worker of some sort. Yep. And went around to these elderly ladies' homes. Most of the women she killed were over the age of 60. Yes. So we got a granny killing grannies. Mm -hmm. And she either strangled or bludgeoned them to death before robbing them. Yeah, she was a big woman. Yeah, muscular. I mean, look at those muscles, man. They, they thought she was a man. Yeah. Yeah. The press donned her Matavajitas, which means little old lady killer. After her arrest in January 2006, Mexican authorities sentenced her to 759 years in prison. Deserves every bit of it. <laughs> every, every, every damn, damn bit, bit of it. Of it. We did an episode on this yeah, lady too. Uh, yeah, yeah, this lady's. Is this a public one too? I'm get. I can't remember this now. This was a full or, episode. Okay, so this lady, we do have a full episode. Link will be in the description if you want to check it out. This one's bonkers. Yes, as well. So this is 64 year old Dorothea Puente. Mm -hmm. um, she stood trial for murdering nine people, including her former boyfriend. Uh, Monterey County convicted Puente after law enforcement found her victims' bodies buried under her unlicensed boarding home in Sacramento. Yep. Puente mur murdered victims who police referred to as shadow people or people without friends and family. Mm -hmm. The elderly, alcoholics, and the disabled. But she got caught because one of the patient, one of the people she killed, had a uh, social worker that was looking in on him. Yeah. Had heard from him for a while. She uh, she gave her boarders at her boarding house fatal doses of drugs and then cast her social security checks. This is mm -hmm. another one that's all about money. Yep. Authorities apprehended Puente in early 90s. She served her life sentence in Chowchilla Prison, where she later died at age 82. Yep. But yeah, definitely check out. We did a full-blown episode yep. on her. She deserved everything she got you. Yeah. Some of those details are nuts. Yeah. If you're into gardening... Yeah. Watch that episode. Yeah. And, wonder, <laughs> and wonder how a little old lady dug what she dug. <laughs> right. Jesus. All right. Hazel Dolce Bodsworth. Hazel? Bod. B-O-D-S. Okay. W-R-T-H. Okay. Hazel. I'm going to say it's D-U-L-C-I-E. I'm going to say Dolce. Dolce. That sounds good. Yeah. Hazel Dolce Bodsworth. Yeah, like the, like the burrito. Yeah. She had a reputation for baking cakes and delivering them to the local police station. Oh. So she's one of those, you know. Well, what was there on those cakes? Australian authorities later discovered she killed three men, including the father of her four children. And served those as food? I don't think I don't think that's part of it. Okay. I, I think well, I think she was kissing ass by bringing Oh, bringing okay. Yeah. So everyone would be like, "Not her. Yeah, she no, brings what? us cookies and stuff." Yeah, she gave us a freaking full meal last week. Right? Yeah. 
Bodsworth staged her killings as accidents. Okay. Her first husband, husband, her first husband, husband, accidentally drowned. Okay. Another of her victims tragically burned in a strange house fire. Wow. She even tried killing her son-in-law by shoving him into a hole, but he survived the attack. And I tried to find more detail on that. What is that? Shoving, shoving him into a hole. a hole. What kind of hole are we talking about here? <laughs> when police finally caught her in 1964, she and her new husband were on their way to pick up their newly adopted son. Oh, just what she needs. Bodsworth and her husband, Henry William Bodsworth, stood trial before the Central Criminal Court. She admitted guilt, and the court sentenced her to life in prison, Thank God. of which she only served 14 years. <laughs> Why? Henry pleaded guilty to manslaughter and served five years for the death of Bodsworth's first husband. What a joke. You know, Australia used to be a penal colony. Come on. I know, people. Jesus, get with it. She looks like Joan Rivers. <laughs> It kind of does. I don't know why I envision, and I can't remember where this one happens. We'll find out. For some reason, I feel like the woman on the left, I just see her having like that strong New Jersey accent. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Anywho, this is Helen Galay and Olga Rutterschmidt. Okay. They work together, huh? Dubbed the Black Widows, plural. Of the internet or just, uh, uh, just, no, okay. just Black Widows? Okay. They set up an elaborate scheme where they would take in homeless men. There we go. Apply for life insurance policies for these men valued in the thousands, and then crush them with their cars and stage hit and run accidents. Oh, I don't mean to laugh. It's just like oh. I'm trying to envision these two having tea, and like who comes up with the idea first? It's like <laughs> I know exactly. Olga, I got plans. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go. <laughs> well, hey, we're not going to be like that lady in San Francisco. We're not, we're not going to get caught, see? What we're going to do yeah. is we're going to find homeless guys, and we're going to get big life insurance policies out on them, and then we're going to run them over with our cars. Does that, that sound good for their voices? That's great. Uh, is that how you think it went down? I think it went down just like that. And the other one was like, hell yes, let's hell yeah, do yeah, let's this. do it. Get her done, did now. Let's go. Now, here's the crazy part. These two ladies received $2.8 million in insurance payouts Jeez. before Southern California authorities unearthed their plot. Wow. So I see why they were doing it. I mean, we're not talking like, you know, oh, oh they yeah, made yeah. 50 grand and then got caught. $2.8 million? Isn't it amazing how you can, I mean, I could go put a policy on you right now for half a million. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous to be able to do that. Right. And not be family. Well, it, but not to have that person there. Right. Signing on with you. Oh, I agree to this. Right. Not me just going in and signing and be like, oh, he said it's good. Because isn't that just like, it's almost like it's uh, perpetuating yeah. people being murdered for this but stuff. That's like, what they do. I, yeah. I mean, if you hear about most of these that occur like that. I mean, he, he never, he didn't go down there and fill the paperwork out. Yeah. I, I just don't know how you can do that. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. Man, it's fucked up shit. The fucked black up. widows killed two men, but police discovered their crimes after the woman failed a third murder attempt. The women tried to convince a homeless man named Jimmy Covington to apply for an $800,000 life insurance. Oh, so they were, they oh, did go in. And so, so they, they were did. convincing these guys. So, well, yeah, an eight hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy. We'll he, share it. We'll share it with you. <laughs> wow. Uh, he became suspicious and fled. Yeah. I, what part? I would be suspicious too. Yeah. These two women that don't know you. Hey, we want to take out an eight hundred thousand dollar life insurance. You know, come sign. Yeah. Sure. Oh. <laughs> right. How about we do it on all of us? In 2008, law enforcement charged Golay and Rudder Schmidt with two counts, each of murder and conspiracy, in the deaths of Kenneth McDavid and Paul Vados. Los Angeles courts sentenced the Black Widows to life in prison. You ain't spending that 2.8. Nope. Well, they spent it on lawyers. Oh, yeah. It's, it's long gone. Dear God, man. Look at that. She's a happy little old lady, isn't Holy she? Holy cow. 
In 2016, Montgomery, Alabama law enforcement arrested 79-year-old Carolyn Hood for allegedly helping her son, William Minton, kill her husband. Investigators report Minton killed Kenneth Hood in 2014 and then dismembered his body. Reportedly, Minton scattered Kenneth's remains around Baldwin County, Alabama. It makes you wonder what dad did. Right. To get killed by mom and son. Right. He must have been an ass. Big time. Must have been a drunk or something. Or these two are complete psychos, right. and they well, share that gene. Well, she does look a little... She looks a little goofy. He looks, yeah. He looks a little insane. Well, despite her attorney referring to her as, quote, basically an invalid. Okay. So she it sounds like she maybe had some issues. Police believe Hood helped Minton dismember Kenneth's corpse. She always said... Something's not wrong with her. While her son did most of the dirty work, prosecutors believe she had a hand in the slaying of Kenneth. Both initially faced capital murder charges, but in 2017, Alabama courts dropped the case against Hood, who has since moved into a nursing home. Minton pled guilty to manslaughter and received a life sentence. They don't want to pay for her health care anymore. Right. Now, here's another. I mean, this lady... I know she's crying in this photo. Why but she crying? What's she, up with that? Well, I think she just got sentenced to something oh. pretty hefty because she's in a courtroom here. Should have done what you did. But um, she does she not also kind of look like she's just bringing cookies? Yep. I mean, she yeah, doesn't look yeah. evil. No. Nope. Well, in 2012, law enforcement arrested 74-year-old Sandra Lane after she shot her 17-year-old grandson multiple times. Reportedly, she shot him in the chest, back, and abdomen. At the trial, her lawyer argued self-defense, claiming that her grandson, Jonathan Hoffman, was a drug addict and Lane was afraid of him. Okay, what part of self-defense plays into the fact that you shot him in the back? Obviously, he was turned away from you. Right. Leaving your area. Michigan prosecutors allege that she was fed up with her grandson's juvenile delinquency and Mm. plotted to murder him. Hoffman had even called authorities during the shooting, further cementing Lane's guilt to the jury. The court sentenced Lane to 22 years in prison. She's 74. Right? So, ninety. if she makes it to 96, well, there's good times. I mean, you know. True, but still. 22 years isn't really, it's like half that. Yeah, but prison does something to a person. That's true. It does age him a little faster. So, she may die there. She probably did. If she, yeah, if she hasn't already. I can only hope. You know what time it is, Mike? It's the wheel of death. Wheel of love. Death. The wheel of death. Well, I got more bad news. Well, God, nobody. We d- <laughs> nobody. We, d- we don't have anybody signed up to no. play this week, but there is good news for the people watching and listening because oh. they can sign up to play the wheel of death. Yes, we can. We need people. Please to play. come on. Yeah. Just somebody, anybody. It's fun. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's five minutes of your evening. You yeah. FaceTime in. We put you on the Jumbotron. We'll have some fun with you. Yeah. You get to spin the wheel of death. And whatever you win on there, you you win. We yeah, send you. You get to meet us on a more personal level. Yeah. And worst comes to worst, you land on a death space. And, I mean, we don't, like, come kill you or anything. No, you no. just don't get anything. You don't get anything. Yeah. But if you're interested in playing the wheel of death, you can sign up at tumormorons.com slash wheel of death. You'll see the little sign up form. Yep. And, uh. We'll put your name in the bucket of doom. Yep, bucket if, of doom. If we draw your name, you, we'll call you and you'll get to play. Yeah. Yeah. So when you hit, like, like and subscribe us, you know, well, you already do like and subscribe because you guys follow us. Yeah. Well, not everyone. Well, not everyone. Because let me tell you, Mike, our YouTube analytics. Yeah, I know. Because I'm nerdy. Uh, yeah. 97% of returning viewers are not subscribers. That's so, not, what's up with that? I don't know. But it, I think you forget. I forget sometimes. There's yeah, people yeah. I follow that I've, I'm like, oh, I've never subscribed to them. Oh, you know. True. So, so do us a favor. Give us a subscribe. It helps us out. Yeah. Helps pump the al- algorithm a little bit. Yeah. Um, and now's a good time because we didn't do the disclaimer yet again. Well, we don't really have to do it for them, do we? Yeah. Well, these aren't members. This is a normal episode. Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is. Yeah, we're showing... I, I think what confused you is some of our bonus episodes are kind of set up more like this, like lists and stuff. But this is like our way to show the public, like, hey, this is kind of like how some oh, okay. of our bonus Dude, episodes see, are. See how much of a moron I am? I, well, <laughs> you're not a moron. I thought this was a, a bonus. No, this is a this God. is a, this is to the Dude, public. What the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> what, what day is this? It's Friday. Well, 
we're off our schedule. It's day. Wednesday yeah. if you're watching the show. But we're not our usual day, so it's what it yeah. is. But thank you for bringing that up because now's a good time to bring up buy me a coffee yeah, and our members. There you go. Yeah. If you're Talk interested about it. in seeing our dumb asses more, uh, we've got a bunch of bonus episodes for our members. So you can become a member at buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons where you can buy Mike and I a cup of coffee yeah. or become a member for as little as three bucks a month. Get bonus episodes, higher tiers, get recognition, like executive producer, stuff like that. Yep. So check it out. Consider. Yeah. You know? Also, we got our merch store. Sure do. Yeah. So if you... Uh, want, a, want a hoodie, t-shirt, walking billboards. Yeah. Walking bill. Mike's Mike's wearing the hat today. Got the hat. You got the t-shirt. I've got the podcast art t-shirt. Yep. You're not wearing the underwear, are you? All that, no. I, okay. No. Okay. Not, not this time. Okay. Not this time. But, uh, you know... Check just check out our website in general because yeah. it's kind of there's just more info yeah, about it. Out, yeah. You can watch and listen to episodes there. You can scan the QR code on your screen or go to two murder morons.com. Yep, we got clothing, we got coffee mugs, and with those coffee mugs, we have coffee. Crime coffee. Yeah. Dang. I almost forgot again. Dang, man. So yes, we are doing this crime coffee thing. Let me frame it with Mike here. Yep. This is our crime coffee. Uh, this one happens to be our silent killer medium roast on the back of every box is a different true crime story. Sometimes it's people we've talked about on the show. Sometimes it's all new stuff. We try to rotate those, but this is kind of our new thing. I love coffee. Yeah. Love coffee. Love coffee. So I was like this crime coffee yeah. people, you know, if you're a fan of the show, sip some coffee, listen to us, yep. watch us. And the good thing about our mugs, it's got our photos on it and <laughs> it's oh. got our phone. Is that a, and, well, no, here's the plug, though. You stick that thing in the microwave for like three minutes to handle it and it doesn't get hot. Mm. They are. They're, they're better than half the mugs I got in, my, in, right. my, in, our, uh, in our cabinet at home. Yeah. They are nice. I love this mug. Yeah. I do have to say. Yep. Also have to bring up that um, if you're listening to us right now. Of course. You're probably wondering why we were referencing all these photos and look at this grainy and da, 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 da. Yeah. Well, that's because we're also mainly a video podcast. Correct. So if you want to see our bright, shining faces and everything we talk about, check us out. YouTube, Spotify. Mm-hmm. You can see the video version. Or if you just want to listen to us, that's cool, too. I get it. Yeah. Take a road Anywhere trip. work, whatever. That's when I listen to podcasts is like long road trips. Yep. We're on all the major platforms. If you just want to listen to the audio version, that's that's cool, too. Yep. Just make sure you give us a like while you're... Yeah, like and subscribe. Subscribe, yeah. Also, before we leave, we've got to give credit where credit is due. Of course. Um, you know, like we said in the beginning, this is an article from Ranker mm-hmm. that we read from, referenced. Um, I will link the description to the original article. So if you guys would like to check out that article, there's, you know, Ranker's got a whole bunch of cool true crime stuff. Also, like linked to this, like if you get to the bottom of this story, yeah. there's a whole bunch more you can click yeah. on. It's an awesome site. So uh, check them out. Yeah. I think that's about it. We cover everything. Mm-hmm. Disclaimer late. Um, again, again. I think I've got four on the it, it's on the it, it, error it, board. It happens. Um, yeah, did we get it all? All right, cool. Well, uh, we got a new show coming every Wednesday, so we will see yep. you all next Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. Yep. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bye.